So now talking about the study plan. So again, as I told before, I would talk about my study material and my study plan. And this is coming from a guy who was a person who was trained in India, who knew how to clear MS exam, who knew how to clear DNB exam, but had a very less idea about how to clear the FRCS exam because I was not trained in that manner. So I think that why ways it might help you. So this is the go to book that I read postgraduate orthopedics by Paul Beniskovich. They came up with the second edition just before my exam. So I think it was in 2016 or early 2017. So this book uh, talks about FRCS trauma and orthopedics from, you know, cradle to grave. It talks about clinical cases scenario. It talks about why was as well. So read it. They actually make uh, scenarios and then they, you know, simulate discussion between the examiner and <coughs> and the examinee. Um, and they would tell you that, you know, how would a candidate who fails the exam would behave or would answer and how a candidate who gets seven or eight would answer. So in that sense, I think it gives you a literally thorough uh, preparation for FRCS. So if you know basic sciences, it is just 30 minutes for basic sciences only. And this book by Manoj Ramachandran, uh, second edition also came up again before my exam. So this is the latest one. So basic orthopedic sciences by Manoj Ch Ch Ramachandran. I think this is the go-to book. I think this is standard. Even the British candidates prepared using this book only. Uh, you need to remember it and... From my personal experience, I think basic sciences is something that this book is something that you have to, you know, if you have to, you know, revise something just before your examination, do it. I got a question on bone bank, which was for five minutes, and I have no idea had I not read this book. And had I not read this book a day before, probably I would not have been able to answer this question to the same level. So read this book a day prior, if you can, before your uh, viva exam because uh, obviously the other part is hand and peach so you know which is your weakness so if you think hand and peach definitely remember or definitely read that as well but when you talk about trauma I think most of us are quite familiar with trauma and uh, the exam is not really testing the depth of your knowledge but the breadth of your knowledge so most of us might be able to score decently in the trauma as well as in adult pathology because the course itself is so wide that there is no point reading it in last minute. So I think basic science, it is a small book, relatively a small book. So it is a very high yield book. Do read this. Well, you should be very well averse with surgical exposure. So just read any book. I think all of us might have read Hoppenfield. I read, read that and most of the exposures I read from there that might be asked also in the basic sciences sometimes. Another, the most important thing is have a study uh, group. So you might not be the only person who would be giving the FRCS. There would be others as well. Make a study group with them. Two or three or maybe four people. Study together. Okay. Discuss one topic. Read about that. And then next week just prepare it. Then present it to each other. So that is very important. I think this is what... I was fortunate that we were a group of three people. All three of us used to read about one topic. We used to discuss it uh, in the next time. And we tried to meet once every week. Well, how frequently you should meet? Ideally, when you start off, you should try and meet once every week. But the frequency has to increase as the time approaches. Okay. Many a times, you would not have the examiners who can take your viva. But so that is why... Uh, the study group is the one in which one person would be assessing or would be asking the question. One of them might be the patient and the other would be the examinee. So start six months before the exam at least. And I'm saying at least because again, similar to that, the two books that I said that I read about, I think it would not have been easy for me, you know, with my work going on as well. It would not have been easy for me to complete those books not just once, but at least twice because of the poor attention again. So try 
to study for six months before the exam but obviously it also depends upon uh, how busy are you with your clinical work make study plots make your study pulse meet often present case scenarios to each other okay the most important thing is you need to practice practice and practice again and again when you go for the final this food should not be the first time that you are actually presenting it to someone you should have practiced it so many a times that you would you know it would it should seem that this is just a normal case interaction you know when they are talking about the viva it is most of the times just a discussion or an interaction between the examiner and the candidate it is not like a proper exam it is always an interaction so you should make sure that you know you don't take that mental pressure on your head if you practice enough you would take it as an interaction and then you would be able to you know at least not utter something which is very stupid for clinical this is what i did practice in the opd so you know that you have five minutes for history taking you know you have five minutes for examination so you take a patient could be anything you might see a patient of back pain in the opd you might see a patient of knee pain in the opd don't have to tell the patient that i'm going to examine you for my frcs training you just start examining take the history so start with the name of the patient name age ask the past medical history pre morbid ambulatory status in upper limb ask for dominance of the hand ask for any uh, other recreational activity address social activity ask for all these questions as well okay and i think you take 30 to 40 seconds or maybe a minute in asking all these questions which are which you might skip in the end okay and then start with the uh, presenting complaints go in details history of present illness past history or uh, you can include the family history in the first part as well or it is up to you but try to do it in 5 minutes if you try to do uh the clinical examination right on the day of exam i don't think you'll be able to do it so 5 minutes is easy to do if you're doing it on a regular basis then examine in 5 minutes make the patient stand make the patient walk do a gait assessment then examine that particular joint in 5 minutes well you might just imagine i mean foot and ankle you might be able to examine in only 2 minutes but hip or spine you may take 15 minutes to examine this is how different it is so you need to come up with a format specifically for long case or intermediate cases you need to come up with a for- format so that you are able to examine that particular joint or that particular system within those 5 minutes so that is very important time yourself when you are doing it do it with your friends as well so specifically with regards to the intermediate case evaluate yourself what are the points that you miss there might be certain things that you miss every time try and focus try and prepare it again and again and this practice you should start at least 3 to 4 months before your exam not just a month before the exam this is something that does not is not taxing but this is something that you definitely would you know clear it there is only practice which is required for clinical you do not require any knowledge or a very limited knowledge discussion would just be on what kind of investigations would you do they would show the x ray they would show the mri or a ct scan and then they would just ask the management there would not be any detailed discussion about the what is the recent evidence or what is the literature review for this particular treatment so it would just be a very cross discussion because there's only 5 minutes